whose name and reputation you've known all your life. This Singer 108 sewing machine was so common back in the early 1940s and 50s that it was referred to as a hobby horse because it was so strong and reliable. Sadly, it had seen better days when we received it and it had to be fully rebuilt. There it goes. We got a functioning sewing machine. We took apart every bolt, polished all the metal guides and pieces, and even repainted the frame. It's one of the earliest sewing machines to have a pedal to control the needle and another to control the centrifugal clutch, which made it really efficient for factory hat production. When we rebuilt it, I was repainting the frame and I actually dropped the pedal, causing it to break in half. I laughed and said to myself, wow, this machine survived over a hundred years until I touched it. Thankfully, we were able to have it re-welded and it's perfect again. This machine is used primarily for installing brim bindings because it's strong enough to puncture the felt of the hat. Now these tables are extremely rare, and in fact, I've only ever seen one other one in the United States. These tables are the control center for the Hatter and are basically the equivalent of your garage workbench. It has a place for their blocks and flanges. It has its own power source. They were actually made in 1922 and in 1927 in Toronto by the Canadian Hoffman Machinery Company. And to my knowledge, there are only two versions made. One of them had a crown steamer, the other a brim steamer. These tables were actually sent out to an auto body shop to be fully restored because they were barely hanging together. Let's see what they look like. Look at that. <laughs> These steamers are the last step in your hat's restorative journey. This 1920s era sandbag press was a staple for any qualified hatter back in the day. They have a large bag of sand heated by an electric element used to press a steamed brim into shape. The weight of the hot sand makes a perfect form-fitting press along the flange to give the brim its individual style and slope. When we acquired these, they were quite rusty and barely functioning, so we completely rebuilt them and had them repainted by an auto body shop. We then rewired and replaced the heating element to make them function like new again. If you have a hat that has a tired, drooping brim, or maybe you want to change from a down brim to a snap brim, bring it to us and we'll reflange it for you and bring your well-loved hat back to showroom condition. You are going on a run. Now this piece I really love. It's a Velasky sewing and basting machine, which is from 1893. And believe it or not, if you buy a Mylan or sewn braid straw hat today, like this one, there's a high probability that it was made on one of these antique machines. There are large companies today that have rows of these machines and hatters stitching hats together all day long. We can also use this for making hat bands, linings or sweatbands with chain stitching. This machine came to us also in non-functioning form and we've totally disassembled it and rebuilt it. We installed a new electric motor and honestly, this little guy works better than any newer model. It's a true hat maker's workhorse. This piece was actually not in use anymore when we received it, and had been sitting in the corner of a basement for over 30 years. It's a crease steamer from the 1950s, which allows you to modify or rebuild the crease in the crown of a fedora or western hat. When we received it, the mechanism was seized and we had to completely disassemble it, fabricate new gaskets, and clean all the steam passages which had been clogged with years of calcium and lime scale. It's entirely steam powered and today it functions like brand new. So if you'd like to change up your crown style, this machine will help us do that for you and give your favorite hat a new lease on life.